DMC Devil May Cry was released in 2013 to rave reviews. Famitsu, GameSpot, IGN, just about every major publication gave this game a glowing review, citing fun gameplay, good level design, and interesting characters. All of which adds up to what most places considered an 8.5 to 9 on 10. High praise to say the least. Audience reaction, on the other hand, was mixed to put it lightly. Before release, most people were angry with the new edgelord style the game was going for. DMC had another strike set against it before it could get out the door, when Hideki Kamiya took to Twitter to state his displeasure with where the reboot of the franchise he had started was going. While he later stated he still wanted fans to give it a chance, these tweets were seen by more aggressive fans of the original series as a go-ahead to take to the internet and express their hatred for what had become of their beloved character action franchise. When the game finally shipped, the hatred didn't go away. Instead, it intensified when the game that came out was exactly what many fans had feared. This character may be named Dante, but fans were never going to accept him because of who he was. Who was he? Well, he was an old Dante, and for a lot of fans, that was enough to write the entire game off. Who handled this conflicted shitstorm of a video game? Ninja Theory. While they're now known best for the phenomenally personal Hellblade, at the time they were just the enslaved guys, a game which you couldn't pay people to play, cause it sucked. While worries that the game was going to be on par with the tire fire that is enslaved were mostly unfounded, Fears that it would contain the same amount of edginess were not. The world is at last your bitch. So, speaking as a fan of the original series, given plenty of time to get away from the hate, how does this game fare? Well, with the upcoming release of Devil May Cry 5, I think it's the perfect time to take a look. Starting with character design. Does this new game hold up to the raw cool factor the originals had? Well, uh, to put it simply, no. Dante, from a visual standpoint, looks great. His new coat is stylish in a way I personally enjoy quite a bit. The black outside with the red internal accents give it a spiritual similarity to the original. The Union Jack, while very overused, is still a really cool flag. His haircut will probably date this game in a few years, but for now it remains surprisingly trendy. Go to a club and you'll see at least 20 dudes with the exact same haircut. Ebony and Ivory, Dante's signature pistols, look cooler than they ever have here. Rebellion and all the rest of your arsenal look really sharp as well, to say nothing of gameplay. The problem with Dante's design has nothing to do with visuals, no matter what the screaming fanboys may lead you to believe. The problem is in the punch to the gut that is his personality. On the surface, he seems the same. The son of Sparta, with a smart mouth, a dangerous fighting ability, and a soft spot for the good of humanity. But how he goes about it is all wrong. It's well known that the original intent of Dante was to prove that you could make a character that is undeniably cool without the character having to cuss or smoke. It was this design philosophy that allowed the originals to walk the line of edgy without falling over into ridiculous. While Dante Prime doesn't smoke, he certainly breaks the other rule. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. The edge is real, ladies and gentlemen. That interaction leads me to the second core problem of Dante Prime, and it unfortunately has to do with the world around him. The Devil May Cry series has always been cool, but it has also always been very silly. The originals were careful about making sure that its serious moments were earned through gameplay. In DMC, the world is dark and depressing. From a writer's perspective, I entirely understand this choice. Use the juxtaposition of a depressing world with our protagonist Smarm to make Dante seem funnier and therefore cooler. It doesn't work. Wait, you'll be there tonight. Probably because the writing is bad. Unfortunately, nobody really fares well in the design department. Cat being a defenseless witch whose main purpose is to be saved by us is a far cry from the don't fuck with me, badass ladies, like lady, we've gotten in the past. 
She serves as a pawn to make us feel like a cool guy in the story. They could have just written Dante better, but instead we had to have a powerless woman to save, because of course we did. Virgil is the saddest of them all. What used to be the coolest character the franchise had is now a fedora-wearing nothing of a character. Devil May Cry 3 showed us a calm, power-hungry Virgil. He could match Dante in almost every way. Dante would approach every fight with overwhelming power, Virgil would counter with unparalleled control. Dante wouldn't shut the fuck up, Virgil hardly spoke. Dante wore his hair down and was laid back, Virgil had slicked back hair and was stuck up. And he was the pinnacle of cool. Virgil Prime is just a whinier version of Dante Prime. His powers have been replaced with, um... What? Are you serious? Who, who thought that was a... Uh, I'm being told hacking. Jesus. Also, putting this white dude in a fucking fedora is awful enough, but then you have him carrying around a katana the entire game? All I can think is anime club president. Look at him and tell me that's not a man who's into Boruto. Now, when it comes to gameplay, I don't have a ton of problems. It's fast, brutal, and fun in a way that, granted, isn't exactly Devil May Cry, but it's definitely reminiscent of its classic gameplay. The only real problem is that the game is just way too easy. Even on the hardest difficulties, it feels nowhere near as hard as what fans were used to. The style system feels like it was made too easy specifically so you can hear that demon voice tell you how fucking sick your moves are. This takes a lot of the satisfaction out of getting that maximum style rating. In the classic games, you had to earn the props. This game gives you them just for playing the game at all. The fact that secret missions cost a collectible to unlock is despicable. The reward for finding a secret mission should be free. Putting a lock on these doors does nothing but frustrate the people who actually took the time to explore your levels. The real problem with gameplay is in level design. Each level is now incredibly linear, which is nothing like the classic series. Devil May Cry 1 used its heritage as a Resident Evil game to make a few very big environments you backtrack through the entire game. DMC gave you lots of levels that may as well be on rails for how much freedom you have. This is not as much of a problem as some people think, but it definitely gives off a lack of faith in the people playing your game. You don't need to vary environments, you should enrich in what's already there. I, I can't forgive the fact that every level in the first 90% of the game is boring as fuck to go through. The second to last real mission in this game isn't boring though. No, it's fucking atrocious. There's one aspect of this level that makes it absolutely unbearable to go through. Ready? Three, two, one, annoying hell flames. These flames pose no fucking threat to anyone playing the game. I feel like Ego Raptor when I say this, but all that these flames do is waste my fucking time. This is the most platforming heavy level in the game, and it's also the only level that has a timing based platforming hazard. When fighting on this stage, you knock enemies back, then because the style ranking system has a time limit, you chase them and what happens? The flames come onto the designated fight platform and damage you despite the fact that you've made no mistakes in combat. And because this level is designed so fucking nebulously, some jumps really aren't clear. So occasionally you miss a jump, just trying to make some progress in the level and guess what? Because of the sheer height of the level, you can sometimes fall long enough that the platforming hazard damages you on the way down. That's just fucking bad design. Take away the hell flames and what do you have? A boring level, sure, but not one with this much bullshit. Every other level is either kind of cool or incredibly boring. The redesigns of the characters, the decreased difficulty and incredibly linear nature of the level design raise an issue with Ninja Theory's developmental hangups. Never in my life have I seen a reboot so salty that fans of a franchise already exist. This is most clearly demonstrated in game with one very obvious moment. 
However, in a leaked slideshow during pre-production of the game, it takes a much more tone-deaf position. One that borders on Japanophobic. This slideshow shows exactly how much of a disconnect the developers had from the series from moment one. It's something I wholeheartedly condemn, if only because of how sad it makes me. The amount of immediate disconnect the developers had from what fans loved is staggering. And, at least to me, it makes some people's immediate dismissal of this title understandable at the very least. Sometimes trying to make something trendy and in the moment takes away from what could be timeless. Devil May Cry is timeless. DMC is not. And at the end of the day, that's all you really need to know.